Mother flowers, what is up? It's I, it's me, it's Steve. I'm back at it one more time with a new video. Thank you all for watching this video and tuning in back into the channel. If you're new here, Mother flowers, make sure you hit that sub button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up and share this video throughout your entire social media. Facebook, Twitter, wherever the fuck you share videos because Mother flowers, why the fuck not? Add the title below says this is your WWE Monday Night Raw review and recap for July 16th, 2018. This is the post Raw after Extreme Rules as we are now literally on the road to SummerSlam. And there have been some matches that were announced for SummerSlam. But other than that, I thought this episode of Monday Night Raw, it was an up and down. I know a lot of people are going to shit on Raw, teach their own. Some people thought it was okay. For me, it was sort of like eh, in the middle. There's some stuff that I did like. There's stuff that I like, eh, whatever. But nonetheless, it's time to see what the fuck they're going to do as we are headed towards SummerSlam. As always, I want to hear from you in the comment threads of this video. Give me your thoughts. If you liked Monday Night Raw this tonight or if you hated it, let me fucking know. Or if not, let me know on Twitter at HeelSteven where I tweet throughout all these shows Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Impact, and all that fun stuff. I also did a 30-plus minute review of Extreme Rules. It's literally in the archives of this channel. So literally, whenever you get a chance, head over to that video, check out my review, and just hear what I had to say about Extreme Rules from this past Sunday. So the show was live from Buffalo, New York. I'm going to say this. The crowd tonight in Buffalo sucked. It was complete trash they were quiet for literally a lot of things on the show mm. way too much shit they were quiet for i kid you not but that's my honest opinion the show kicked off with kurt angle ready to see if brock lesnar was going to meet the ultimatum and apparently brock lesnar wasn't there and as you all remember at extreme rules kurt angle literally issued out the ultimatum that brock had to be there today on raw and agreed to the terms for the Universal Championship at the SummerSlam and defend this title, or he will be stripped out of the Universal title. I think the entire IWC was waiting and waiting for Kurt Angle to strip Brock Lesnar from the championship. And he was going to do it. Paul Heyman comes out. He's literally trying to stop Angle from doing this. He tells Kurt Angle that Brock Lesnar wants to win the UFC Heavyweight Championship with the universal title around his waist. And again, Kurt Angle's ready to strip, to strip him out of the bell because Kurt Angle says that, hey, Brock Lesnar has to defend the universal title at SummerSlam. And then Paul Heyman agrees, so it's going to happen. Brock Lesnar will defend the championship at SummerSlam. And then literally we had run-ins, or if not appearances, if you will, from Bobby Lashley. As you all know, Lashley won at Extreme Rules, beating Roman Reigns. We had then Finn Balor. Again, Balor claiming that he was the first ever Universal Champion. He didn't get his you know, rematch when he came back. It's been years in the making. We had Elias come out saying that he wants a shot. Rollins coming out. As you all know, Rollins lost. Or did he, yeah, he did lose in the Iron Man match last night for the Intercontinental Championship against Dolph Ziggler. And then after that, Drew McIntyre came out talking about how when he came into WWE again, his goal were two things. Number one, make sure Ziggler retains the Intercontinental title. And of course, to become Universal Champion for the first time. And then out came Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns just wanted to fight. So then Kurt Angle pretty much said, you know what? There's going to be two triple threat matches. And the two winners of those matches, right, were going to meet next week. And the winner of that match will be the number one contender to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam for the Universal title. And when I heard about this, like, yo, the rain's on the fucking wall. Even Stevie Wonder literally saw what was happening. The writing was literally on the motherfucking wall, Mother Flowers. I shit you not. Okay? If you, if you did not for a minute realize it was going to be Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley, then, bruh, in the words of Eli Drake, you're just a dummy. Yeah. 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 So we had the first match. We had Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. Um, I thought this match was pretty good to kick off the show. Uh, Finn Balor does his like over-the-top rope dive. Even Drew McIntyre did like a sunset flip 
over the top rope. It's crazy that someone his size, like granted, I've seen this, I've seen him do it numerous times in Impact and Evolve and stuff like that. So I've already been accustomed to him doing that. But for, I guess, the casual viewer who hasn't seen him do that or hasn't seen him wrestle, you know, since he left, for him to do stuff like that, it's pretty cool, especially someone his size. But there's a moment in this match where Roman Reigns spears Drew McIntyre on the outside of the ring. There's a moment where literally Finn Balor was going to have the win. Like literally right to hit the coup de gras. And it ends up with Drew McIntyre making the save. Uh, for a moment there, I really thought they are going to do it again. Finn Balor beating Roman Reigns. You remember like a couple years ago, Finn Balor debuted on Raw from the superstar, you know, the draft, right? And his first match was against Roman Reigns, and he won. And for a minute, you go back to that time period, right? And all this lads, so they're all in the ring. And then Drew goes for the Claymore, but he hits Finn Balor. And then Roman hits the spear for the one, two, three. So Roman Reigns pins Finn Balor. I'll be real. I'm going to keep a 100 with you guys, all right? Let's assume for a minute that Roman Reigns wins the Universal title, right, at SummerSlam. I would be so open to the idea of a Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre feud, a program. I think they'll. I think honestly, they could have a lot of good matches. I know people are gonna crap. Oh, it's Roman Reigns. He sucks. He's this. He's that. But say what you want about the guy. But the guy can have good matches too. I think those two, somewhere down the road, why the fuck not? But I was always waiting from you guys in the comment thread your thoughts on that idea of a potential Drew McIntyre versus uh, Roman Reigns feud. Let me know. Backstage we see. Kurt Angle telling Bailey that if she can't get along with Sasha Banks, then one of them will be traded to SmackDown. My only question is, who from SmackDown can go to Raw? That's my question. I'm ser- I'm curious about that. Will it be Mandy Rose? Will it be Sonya Deville? Will it be uh, Carmella? Will it be Lana? Will it be Asuka? Will it be Charlotte? Maybe Charlotte, but we'll see about that too. Um, but yeah. We then, after this, we get Dolph Ziggler versus Bobby Roode. As you all know, Ziggler won his Iron Man match last night. Controversial fashion, what have you. But he connected a super kick, and then for the pinfall. I'll be real about it. You know, I think all of us are already wanting to see Bobby Roode become a heel. Like, yes, Bobby is a good performer, all the fuck you want. But seeing him as a babyface, it's already worn on me. Like, I was not big on them going at it. I'm talking about Ziggler and Bobby Roode. Like, when Bobby Roode came into the main roster, like, literally last year, and I'm not a fan of it now. Like, ah, I saw it already. I don't need to see it again. The faster you make this guy a heel, have a fucking few with fucking Finn Balor, the better off he's going to be. Seriously. We then get Mojo Raleigh versus Tyler Breeze, because fuck it, why not? And literally, Raleigh hit an Alabama, an Alabama slam on Tyler Breeze. Literally, beating the holy hell out of Tyler Breeze. Now... From what it looks like, they're building up Mojara to be like a big threat in the long run, which again, I'm all I'm all with. Like, hey, you're putting out there your homegrown talent that came from the PC. Why the fuck not? You know, I'm not saying you know give him the world title tomorrow or the Intercontinental title, but you put him in the mix. You like you get him these squash wins, you know, for now, and you build him up to a program. Why the fuck not? It could work, you know? But we'll see where that goes as well. We then get Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox. It ended in no contest. Uh, Fox was attacking Bailey outside of the ring. And literally then Sasha Banks made the save. And then Banks took out Dana Brooke as well. And then leading, again, all this shit to a double count out. In other words, it was a double count out, but there's no contest. It's, it's the same shit. Nobody fucking won. All right? And you see Sasha Banks like, like marching to the back. Right? And then later on, we get the big controversial thing that everyone's been talking about, right, on social media regarding what happened. And I guess this is a thing where Bailey like, want to know from Sasha, what's going on? You know, what's wrong? And then literally Sasha saying that Bailey, you know, she will let other people beat her, like that being her former best friend, only her, if you will. And Banks said that she loved Bailey. She loves her. And people are thinking, oh, this is going to be a fucking lesbian angle, HLA. I get it. You know, WWE and the LGBT community in GLAD, they're like this. So it's possible. At the same time, hey, you got Finn Balor wearing rainbow shirts. You got Swinging DeVille on SmackDown Live repping the colors. So 
is a possibility. I just don't see it because, again, we live in this PC world where people jump the gun and, you know, get everything up in a notch. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll be real about it, too. I didn't think they'll really go this far. Um, I did say months ago that if they're going to touch again, if they're going to go at it in the ring and touch again, for the, it's going to be a SummerSlam one-on-one. They're going to go back to the building where it all started years ago. But damn, I didn't think this will be the buildup and shit. But other than that, we'll see where the fuck this goes next week. Will we eventually see LHLA? I mean, think about it. Yes, over the years, there have been some gay, like... I mean, there have been, again, you kind of get what I'm saying, angles in the past. Um, there's been Trish Stratus and Mickey James. There have been Billy and Chuck. Um, if I can remember correctly as well, Dom Marie, Tori Wilson from the hotel room years ago. Just to name a few I can think of right on top of the fucking head. But nonetheless, let's see where the shit goes. How are they going to carry this shit to SummerSlam? I do believe, again, we're going to see Bailey and Sasha at SummerSlam in the big rematch years later in that building and shit. And people are going to eat it fucking up, just saying. We then get the B-team, who are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. As you all know, the B-team beat the Woken, Matt Hardy, and Bray Wyatt team last night. They were showing clips of how they were celebrating literally all over the arena and all that stuff. And they faced the Ascension. And the Ascension, for a moment, were beating up the B-team. And eventually, you know, the B-team picked up the win. They're still undefeated, right? Uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel literally they keep the win streak alive. But Matt Hardy and White showed up on the Jumbotron and they announced that their rematch for the tag titles will be next week. So is there a possibility that the B team's title run could be just a short lived or will they actually do it again and win next week? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but I, again, you know, I know people are like, oh, you know, they're saying, oh, the tag, the tag team division is a joke. I'll be real about it. I enjoy comedy like this. I really do. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Heat Slater and Rhino when they won the, the SmackDown tag team titles many years ago. So it had a similarity, if you will. But we'll see. Um, after this, we get Alexa Bliss in the ring gloating about beating Nia Jax, saying she has beaten every woman in the locker room. And she talked about Ronda, Ronda, Ronda really showed up early from a suspension and she attacked Bliss. That happened again last night. And the thing about it too is, you know, I still want to know. I still want to fucking know why oh why is Mickey James still with Alexa Bliss? I literally thought for a minute when Alexa was talking about how she beat everybody, even though, yes, she did beat already Mickey James on SmackDown Live. Maybe they'll, because again, WWE wants to have, you know, at times make the belief that we don't remember shit, right? Our, our memory span is short, that they might have Mickey attack Alexa, but that's not going to happen, okay? So, Ron, so Alexa's talking about Ronda Rousey still being suspended and how she should be suspended even more for what happened again last week or last night, if you will. And then Ronda Rousey's like literally walking through the crowd. Right, people are going crazy for this shit. You see Alexa and, and Mickey James trying to leave. Ronda catches up to them and shit, and just Ronda's going crazy trying to attack both women here. She does like again like a fucking thing where I guess she dives out of the ring or she just tackled all of them and shit. Uh, Kurt Angle then comes in and tells her to stop, and then Constable Corbin demanded Kurt Angle to, you know, put an in an increase, if you will, in the suspension. Make it an extension, if you will, of the suspension. And Kurt Angle's like, fine, you're suspended one more week. And then Constable Corbin went to get his phone to tell Stephanie about this shit. And as he's gone, Angle tells you know, Ronda Rousey that, hey, listen, here's what I'll do. Your suspension ends on Wednesday. or it's, it's, it Probably, yeah, it's going to be another week, right? But at SummerSlam, she will face Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's title. And people went crazy for this sort of... Even though, like I said before, the crowd tonight, for me at least, was garbage. The crowd was trash. They were quiet for a lot of segments. They were dead. Um, I'll say this, though. I already know what's going to happen. I know people were going crazy for Ronda Rousey. All the fuck you want. But let's keep it 100. The moment Ronda wins the belt, which is going to happen at SummerSlam, the entire IWC are going to implode. Oh, she doesn't deserve it. This is bullshit. It's going to happen. It's IWC Hypocrisy 101. You know, and y'all know me, I said this during my Extreme Rules review. I get a kick 
seeing the entire IWC, you know, implode, complain, and bitch. I love it. It puts a smile on my face at times when I see your favorite YouTuber, your favorite podcaster out there, your favorite so-called, you know, cornball news reporters and shit, bitch and moan and complain. I enjoy the shit. I really fucking do. Especially when I'm high as all shit, all right? It's not the fucking weed talking either, all right? It's not an insult. Just a fact of life. You see what I did there? Yeah. Then we get the Authors of Pain versus Tayo Sunil and, and Apollo, Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed, I'm sorry, I said Apollo Creed, but you can't get the idea. Apollo, Apollo Creed, right? Apollo, fuck, it's Apollo. It's Authors of Pain versus Apollo and Tayo Sunil. AOP connected the last chapter, and they literally got the win. It's like, okay, you know. Also, I didn't mention this during the BT match. They were showing, like, the the Revival backstage watching the match. So, it's like, they're hinting the idea that all these teams now are trying to go after the B-team. And I think another team as well is the Authors of Pain. I think the Authors of Pain should be the ones to take the belt off the B-team before SummerSlam. But we'll see where that goes as well. We then get Sarah Logan versus Ember Moon. Um, it's literally Liv Morgan distracted Ember Moon. On the top rope, and then when Logan ran and knocked her off the top rope, and then she literally got over the pin. I must say this match was crazy and like that, but it just felt like it went way too long for what it needed to be. But the idea was, hey, you know, Ember Moon beat Liv Morgan. Now let's see if she can be Sarah Logan, but she couldn't do it. There's a distraction. I would not be surprised if next week they have a fucking rematch because again, that's WWE for you, and they're booking one on one. Think about how many times we saw Elias versus Bobby Roode over the years. Yeah, think about that for a minute. We then get the main event. We get Bobby Lashley versus Elias versus Seth Rollins. I thought this match was pretty fun. Uh, just crazy spots here. Rollins, again, just being the MVP of this match. He did a buckle bomb to Bobby Lashley. Again, Lashley being big as all fuck. And then he had a falcon arrow on Elias. Uh, did like the suicide dives outside there to both guys. Um, went for the curb stop multiple times, but it was all said and done. Lashley hits a spear on Elias and pins him for the one, two, three. While Ron would try to like get back in the ring to break the fall, but it was too late. So, like I said earlier, Mother Flowers, we're going to see it again. Again, again, again. Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. We are going to see it again, bruh. If you thought Extreme Rules, it was, you know, if it, that wasn't too much, we're going to see it again. And you know what? In all, in all seriousness, right? On a serious note, I actually rewatched Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley. Again, this time I was a little sober, you know, if you will. And I thought they had a pretty good match at Extreme Rules for what they did and all that stuff. Right? There's a lot of stiff shots and shit like that. I expect that. And I'm going to keep them on it too. I don't think there will be a winner. Because be real about it. None of you want to see Roman and Brock. In Brooklyn. The people in that building are going to eat that shit. They're going to tear it to shreds. In Brooklyn. If they do that. So what I think is going to happen. There will be some controversial finish. Where I guess both men are counted out. Or both shoulder, both men's shoulders are you know on the mat. Or they're down whatever. That's probably going to happen. And we're going to get a triple threat. I would much rather see a triple threat. As much as I am not big on the idea. Of multi-person matches. Closing these big pay-per-views. It's still like I'd rather see that than see Roman versus Brock again. And who's to say, hey, maybe Bobby wins or Roman wins, or hey, what if Brock wins, right? Brock wins, and then the Monday Raw after SummerSlam, Braun Strowman cashes in on Brock Lesnar. Because again, Brock is due is scheduled is scheduled to appear at both SummerSlam and Raw. So they could do that. To get the big reaction, literally the Raw after SummerSlam. Granted, people will be tired as all fuck that when when, we, when they get to that day, but we'll see. Nonetheless, I thought this Raw had its up, it had its downs. To me, it was more in the middle. Uh, did this show excite me for SummerSlam? Not really. Uh, again, I get it. People are going crazy for Ronda Rousey getting the Raw Women's Championship match, but even if that, it's still not enough to make me want to go buy a ticket for SummerSlam. Who the hell knows? Maybe I will in the long run. Um, I'm definitely going to take over. That's I definitely know. I still gotta buy. I don't have a ticket yet, but I'm gonna buy one in the upcoming weeks. But for SummerSlam, we'll still see. WWE starts four weeks, four motherflowering weeks 
to get me and people excited for SummerSlam. I tell you guys what, let me know in the comment threads if you are looking forward to SummerSlam thus far. I get it, it's still the first week. I should be asking this question literally after next week, but we'll see. Um, but tomorrow, SmackDown Live, I will be reviewing SmackDown tomorrow. I will be reviewing also NXT. I will be doing a prediction video for Impact Wrestling Slimiversary. Again, it's coming up this Sunday. I will be watching that show and as well reviewing it on this channel. So if you are new to this channel, hit that sub button down below. Give this video a big old sub thumbs up. Look at this, look at this mother flowers. I'm like fucking Fonzie. Hey, you're a mother flower. I'm a mother flower. We're all mother flowers. All right. Follow me on Twitter at Heel Steven, where I tweet throughout all these shows, Raw and SmackDown, NXT, and all that fun stuff. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, it's me, it's Steve, and I'm out. Peace out, y'all. Listen, brah, they gave Okada and, and, and Omega like seven stars and shit. I guarantee you Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns, they're going to get like 20 stars, bro. I'm telling you right now, bro. You can obviously tell how, how sarcastic I'm sounding with this shit. Bruh, the weed is too fucking strong right now. Seriously.